Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about Hepatorenal Syndrome, one of the complications of chronic liver disease. Hepatorenal Syndrome is characterized by functional renal insufficiency. That means, that means kidneys are normal, but their functions are abnormal. It is mainly seen in severe liver disease, ascites, it is mainly due to hyperperfusion of kidneys. There will be arterial vasodilatation in splanchanic circulation in chronic liver disease, which can trigger by portal hypertension produced during chronic liver disease. It has got the major role in uh, reduction in the uh, renal perfusion and renal functions in chronic liver disease. This vas vasodilatation and splanchanic circulation changes are mainly due to nitric oxide production in uh, chronic liver disease. That is a major uh, pathological problem in hepatorenal syndrome. So hyperperfusion is the major problem. Hyperperfusion of the kidney is a major problem in hepatorenal syndrome that produces functional defects in the kidney kidney but it will not produce any structural damage to the kidneys so hepatorenal syndrome indicates a terminal stage of hepatic disease so we can see many patients who is having chronic liver disease once they develop hepatorenal syndrome that is a terminal process this patient will improve only with liver transplantation but some of the precipitants of hepatorenal syndrome are spontaneous bacterial peritonitis or usage of diuretics. There are two important forms of hepatorenal syndrome. One is a slow progressive form and another one is a rapid uh, progressive form. So type 1 HRS is more serious type. It defined as at least a twofold elevation in the serum creatinine. That means 50% of the reduction in the creatinine clearance to a level more than 2.5 milligram per deciliter during a period of less than two weeks. So it's a rapidly progressive disease. Whereas type 2 is a renal failure. It is less aggressive or less severe uh, than type 1. In here, the patient can have predominant ascites, which is resistant to diuretic therapy. So there are two types. Type 1 is rapidly progressive. Type 2 is slowly progressive. When we talk about kidneys in uh, hepatorenal syndrome, actually the kidneys are normal. Uh, hypoperfusion of the kidney produces renal damage. But it is transient. If you can improve the circulation in the splanchanic circulation, then kidneys will come back to normal. But the problem in hepatorenal syndrome is uh, the severity does not correlate with the uh, creatine or urea elevation in a patient who is having hepatorenal syndrome. So both urea and creatine production is reduced in hepatorenal syndrome patients due to chronic liver disease and decreased muscle mass and decreased protein and meat intake. So creatine is produced from muscles or protein intake. So when their muscle is completely lost or if uh, we are restricting the uh, patient from protein rich diet, then elevation in the creatine and urea may not be very high. So the level of urea and creatine does not match with the uh, kidney dysfunction. And another important investigation we do in kidney failure is neutrophil uh, gelatinase associated lipocalin, that is NGAL. The levels also lower in uh, prerenal or hepatorenal syndrome. So, it will be difficult to make a uh, complete picture from only the investigations. So, the clinical condition of patient is very, very important. Uh, absolute reduction in the urine output may be a very good uh, clinical tool to diagnose hepatorenal syndrome. However, we always do urea creatinine uh, levels. It will be elevated in hepatorenal syndrome, but the levels does not match with the severity.
history of the disease. Now we can make a diagnosis like this. The patient is having chronic or acute liver disease with advanced liver failure and portal hypertension. Patient is developing acute kidney injury. That means creatinine is elevated more than 0.3 mg per deciliter within 48 hours or an increase from baseline 50% within 7 days. Absence of any other cause, that is very very important. We should rule out all other causes like uh, like patient might have taken NSAIDs or any other drugs which produce acute kidney injury or hypotension and shock which can produce pre-renal failure, hypovolemia which can produce uh, pre-renal failure, any other nephrotoxic drugs. Uh, all these things should be ruled out including sepsis should be ruled out to make a diagnosis of hepatorenal syndrome. Now once we diagnose hepatorenal syndrome, the actual treatment is liver transplant. Transiently to bridge the therapy in between uh, normal life to uh, liver transplant, we can start some drugs in uh, this type of patients in that the most important drug is vasopressin analog. It partially corrects many of the systemic and renal hemodynamic abnormalities like elevation mean in mean arterial pressure, reduction in the plasma renin activity and norepinephrine concentration and increases the renal blood flow. So that transiently increases the renal blood flow. We use terlipressin in combination with albumin. Terlipressin dose is uh, 1 to 2 milligram every 4 to 6 hours IV bolus with albumin IV bolus 1 gram per kg per day 100 gram maximum followed by 25 to 50 grams per day until terlipressin therapy is discontinued. So it can be continued for nearly two weeks. So terlipressin is the most important drug uh, in patients with hepatorenal syndrome who are admitted to hospital especially to ward. Alternative drugs for terlipressin is medodrin can be given it's an oral drug starting at 7.5 milligram tid increase up to 15 milligram tid octreotide also can be given in opd basis or ward intravenous infusion or subcutaneous we can give subcutaneous so opd basis treatment also possible uh, three times daily if the patient is admitted to icu it is better to start on norepinephrine in this type of patients or we can go for a procedure oriented therapy that is transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt that also significantly improves the splanchnic circulation and kidney perfusion so a patient will be better for some more time we'll get more time for renal transplantation so tips is another very important and one of the best options in hepatorenal syndrome it can prolong the deterioration so we will get more time for renal transplantation now we can see the prognosis uh, the prognosis is not good if the patient develops hepatorenal syndrome so before branding the patient as hepatorenal syndrome we have to rule out all other causes for renal failure including sepsis nephrotoxic drugs or hypoperfusion due to hypotension due to any cause so all should be ruled out Liver transplantation is the only treatment for hepatorenal syndrome. We can advise dialysis also as a bridge therapy like tips we have discussed. Uh, so dialysis can be done in patients who is having hepatorenal syndrome who are admitted in ICU to uh, protect the kidneys. And if SBP is present, we have to treat with antibiotics for prevention of uh, SBP, we can start norfloxacin prophylaxis. So we have uh, discussed about one of the most important complication of chronic liver disease and liver failure, that is hepatorenal syndrome. Patient can be admitted in ward, or we can treat as OPD. We have subcutaneous injections like octreotide or terlipressin or noradrenaline. The ultimate choice of therapy is liver transplant what we should remember is kidneys are normal in these conditions only hyperperfusion of the kidney produces renal failure thank you